So this is the machine part, this is the organic part, and that's our center. So you can almost say that this is powering the, the giving him the energy, and this is giving him like the blood and all the organic stuff that this char character needs, right? So as a design, you have some kind of coherent uh, coherency within it. Okay, next design, a little bit of atmosphere, painted these tubes in. So this approach is very different than last week's, right? Last week's the one with the uh, the ancient battle or whatever, where everything is painted. This one relies on a, a combination of textures and uh, photo plates and paint. Right? So the approach is different. The brushes I use are different. I use much tighter brushes on these. Uh, most of these are painted with a default round brush you see up here. Right? There's no special brush being used. That way everything is nice and tight. We don't get some kind of uh, illustrative things in here. More wires going in here. Some atmosphere. Right? Black and white check to make sure the values are good. And I always kept the grid. This grid is always here. This way you can see these engine parts and these machine parts always follow the perspective, right? Because without that, then you can't, it's very difficult to eyeball something like this, which where you're in a very closed up environment. The further you're out, for example, you're doing a giant city or something like that, certain small perspective mistakes will not show up simply because the scale is too small. When you're in this kind of place where everything's basically human scale, like a table or a jar, these are all the size of a human. So if you screw up the perspective at this level, it's very easy to tell. It's very easy for someone to catch it. Uh, so having this perspective grid here helps that dramatically. And then we'll on the final one, which is F. This will take a while to open. This is about a 200 meg file. You can see here it's opening up. Oh, by the way, I talked about that status thing uh, last week. Uh, I can actually turn it on. I can probably see it right here. It should be on in these. I, I usually don't have it on. Okay, here's a status bar. So you can see way down here, this file is going over the RAM allowance of this computer. This is still the laptop that I used last week. So you can see here, it says the scratch board is 1.3 gigs over 800. 64 megs, meaning that this file is now eating up more memory than I'm allowing the computer to give it. Yeah. So any kind of work I'm doing here is going to start relying on the hard drive uh, as, a, as a memory, as RAM, and that's quite slow. So this, I wouldn't really recommend painting this size painting on a laptop like this. Uh, it'll slow you down dramatically. Uh, but let's go in here. You can see there's a big difference between this one and the one we imprint, uh, imported in. Okay, so that's what we started with, right, from the last image, uh, I think number E, let me double check, yeah, FE, right, so this is from E, I import it in, flatten it, and then start a brand new layer batch, so what are we painting here, okay, so here I started adding some details to the backboard, kind of this big giant machine, maybe the uh, scientist got a door or some kind of heavy machine from somewhere as his back area, this layer is a texture, so it's blank, this is some early texture, you can see I put in some textures of a human, right, some some muscles and things like that into the legs. Uh, I think I don't even think this came from a human. It's from a flower petal or something like that, right? Just something that looks like muscles. Initial designs on him, breaking him apart, putting some stuff on his head, getting his nose and eyes rendered out. Right? So just basically defining who he is. Some value to balance him out, shadows. And then here we really go to town with some additional details, like these wires I start going to his arm. You can see on off what that does. This one's probably detailed elsewhere. Let's see, let's gotta find these. <clears throat> uh, just a really quick texture down here, just to give it some uh, details down there. And then run wires from that over. And this will help with perspective, right? We're trying to create a 3D scene here. So by running wires this way, we're seeing lines go towards our character, which is Frankenstein in this case, helping the eye create 3D space between the camera uh, and this character. Additional details here. These are very, very small details that if you're watching HD, you could probably catch additional wires here and there. This layer is the uh, special effects layer. This layer I put on a different uh, group. This way I could turn it off, you can see. All right. So let's turn this on and just do each one on in time. Most of these layers you can see are normal. Some of them are, some of them are dodged, some are multiplied, but most of them are just on normal. All right? Shadow. But this painting, again, is quite different from last week's. Uh, this is a photo manipulation uh, painting where you, where you started from a photo plate. Um, so you got to make sure the density of your material is correct. And I talked about this on one of the previous tutorials, uh, texture density. So watch the other ones. I think it's the one with the uh, kind of sniper nest. All right? That one, I believe, is that one that talks about texture density. So you got to make sure that your density, meaning that the detail level here, way back here, this, uh, this stuff over here, that that level of detail also exists when you put the camera right over here, which you do see here. That gives you the same amount of density. If your digital painting here is very, very loose, 
it's going to show that these two don't match, that this photo is, ex is existing in a photo world and your uh, painting is existing in a painting world. What you want is a blend of both. Okay. More lighting adjustment, saturation. I thought it was too, um, his body here is a little bit too saturated. So to, to do that, to adjust it, I put a layer on saturation and paint a little bit of black into his chest. And that's all. Not to the entire image, just his chest. So you can see orange, a little bit less orange. Okay, minor details like little wires and those kind of things. Define his jawline a little bit. I didn't like this jawline. I thought he looked too friendly. So stiffen it up, more Frankenstein-ish. I dropped in a, a very quick texture of teeth just to make him creepier. You know. And then used that texture and extracted and painted the rest. Made him into a monster looking guy as you can see here. But I gotta make sure his face holds up. In a shot like this, if this image was used to for uh, video editing for example then we have enough information for the editor to actually zoom in and tell a story here and then zoom back out and tell the rest of the lab right so as I move the screen across you can see lots of little details for the video editor to uh, grab from some fog to separate him out here's the blood that's kind of leaking out from his body so it's not a perfect stiff uh, uh, stitching job Right, have fun with this kind of stuff. You know, when you work on this, I mention this, I think, in every video. Uh, try to be there yourself, you know, and try to imagine what's it like. What kind of detail will you see? And what kind of stuff will make the audience uh, believe your image? You know, these tiny little things like one drip of blood, a little bit of red. Uh, it's kind of fun to, to put in. It tells a story. Some dust in the air. It's very minor, probably very hard to see. A place like this, you figure with all the electricity and static stuff in the air, there's going to be a, a quite a bit of light debris floating around. This is the lightning layer that I painted. I definitely want to keep this on its own layer, just in case if you're working in production and a director or production designer, or if you're the art director yourself, decides, hey, you know what, I don't want this lightning here. If I flatten this out, it'll be very hard to paint it back uh, out. You see, because it intersects so many other shapes. So if this is flattened, to paint this out, I gotta go in here and sample everything and paint it out, right? A lot of work. So for things like this, I typically keep them on a layer and I don't flatten them down. I keep them as is, you see here. So we can always adjust it, we could change the opacity. For example here, we can make it very light if you want. All right. So maybe you could do that. You could change its colors. So if I want this to go blue, hold on, this is slow. Remember the whole scratch disk thing I was talking about? By doing this right now, it has to go to the hard drive. All right. So if I want this lining to be sort of bluish color, I could do that. So by having it on this layer, I could do these kind of adjustments, which are quite, uh, quite fun. And the last thing I did is just sign your name. So you can see here, this is done in September 9th about a month and a half ago. And you know, that's about it. And before I finished this kind of painting, what I did is I, I um, copy and pasted and added a sharpen layer. So everything goes, oops, now Photoshop's gonna freeze up, you can see here. Um, here we go, caught up. The sharpen layer, if I turn this on and off, you can see that as this is blurry, uh, right? This is slightly blurry, a little sharper. So that's all, that's all it does. The grid is still in the shot here, you see. And that's about it, and then from here, the only thing I did for the final image, which I didn't save, unfortunately, as a PSD file, is the red on his body. Just to extract him out a little bit. I think it still works in the previous image, but I thought this uh, red it really adds to pulling the human eye to this shot. And also, I contrasted this red here. Let me get some uh, color here. This area here with some kind of reddish tones here. So we have this nice read in terms of composition, right? We have light source. Light source, light source, light source. So your eye has, has a nice little flow. And then we have this red to contrast this red. So we have a nice flow that goes this way as well. So yeah, this is a quick one for this week, but hopefully this will help some of you guys see how layers are set up in a painting like this, um, especially something that's detailed like this, right? That um, typically I would definitely have some layers uh, when I paint because it's too many, too many details to keep track of, right? It's a different approach, it's different than last week's, but you know, you can find your way, which method you like, because at the end of the day, clients don't really care what method you use. As long as you're not copying or plagiarizing other people's designs, then anything goes. And also, if you do use a photo plate, Keep in mind, try to take your own photos, just like the one behind this one. That is a photo that I took. Nobody owns it. So at, at the end of the day, all the design is still 100% yours, okay, the creativity. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this week's Design Cinema. It's a quickie one. So next week, I think I'll go back and paint something again live. Um, until then, have a good week, and I'll see you guys uh, next week. Bye-bye.